commentary, entertainment, sports, news, and opinion. Now, here is Steve Malsberg. Over the last several days, we've seen significant gains made by ISIL, a terrorist organization that operates in both Iraq and in Syria. In the face of a terrorist offensive, Iraqi security forces have proven unable to defend a number of cities, which has allowed the terrorists to overrun a part of Iraq's territory. And this poses a danger to Iraq and its people. And given the nature of these terrorists, it could pose a threat uh, eventually to American interests as well. All right, folks, that's Barack Obama. More of what he had to say uh, earlier today. And joining us now to talk about all of this mess is terrorism expert and author Rich Miniter. And once again, back with us uh, for the second day in a row is a lieutenant colonel, former lieutenant colonel of the U.S. Air Force, military intelligence expert Rick Fran Francona. Gentlemen, good to see both of you. Steve. Good with you. All right, uh, Rick, uh, what do you make of, uh, of what the president had to say today um, among the, uh, the, the remarks? No U.S. troops, of course. Uh, this does pose a possible threat to our, our interests and also basically saying it's up to the Iraqis uh, to fix this uh, when push comes to shove through non-military means. Yeah, I think he's well, understanding first of all, the, the president threat. made a mistake by ruling out. Uh, well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let's start with uh, Rick. I'm sorry. I realize there's Rich and Rick. Uh, Rick Francona. Oh. No, sorry. Okay. Uh, I think the president is understating the threat. I think this is uh, a, a demonstrated actual threat to U.S. interests already. Uh, ISIS is nothing new in Iraq. They've been there for a long time. They've been posing a threat to the regime, uh, the, uh, the Al Maliki government for a long time. Uh, but now it's come to the forefront. Uh, his uh, willingness to use American force is uh, a bit uh, confusing to me right now. He said everything is on the table, but U.S. troops aren't. So I assume that he means he might be willing to use air power, uh, but he's taking a long time to do this. Uh, he needs to get things moving if we're going to do anything. And, he, and uh, you know, his, his uh, agreement to send more weapons to the Iraqis is, is not a good idea just yet because we've, they don't know what to do with the weapons. They need leadership and they need some American advice. And I don't see that coming. Rich? Well, I think, first of, all, first of all, the president should not have ruled out ground troops. He should have said that, that classic presidential formulation that all options are on the table by telegraphing that there's no way that we'll put boots on the ground. What we're doing is offering aid and encouragement uh, to the enemies of order and peace in Iraq. Secondly, uh, he is uh, ignoring, the president is ignoring a key fact, which is this is not a ragtag group of militants. This is a, a powerful, well-funded, well-organized force uh, organized along military lines that has uh, armored vehicles, heavy machine guns, and, and rocket rifle grenades and so on, and is able to uh, get a successful number of defections from Iraqi military forces. So the Iraqi army is defecting and joining these guys uh, in typical Arab fashion, joining the side of the winners. So this force is becoming larger, more organized, and more sophisticated. And it threatens the very future of Iraq and of the Middle East. If ISIL were to succeed, uh, you would have a, a single extremist band going from northern Lebanon through Syria and right up to the Iranian border. It would almost certainly invite an Iranian invasion of southern Iraq. Uh, and then you'd have a full-on Arab uh, Persian civil war in the Middle East, which would drive oil prices sky high, hurt the American economy, and threaten the lives uh, and futures of our friends and allies, including the Israelis, but also moderate Arabs like the, the, the Jordanians. So the president is really uh, flirting with Armageddon here and uh, acting as if this is simply a distant question, when in fact it's a real and present danger to the future of the United States and his presidency. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm sure, Rick, you agree. And, and what about the, the timeline? I mean, he said he's going to meet with his military advisors. I think he used the phrase over the next few days. Um, I mean, in the next few days, Baghdad could fall. Yeah, yeah. R Rich brings up a great point. These guys are not getting weaker. They're getting stronger. Uh, uh, the Sunnis are rallying to these guys because they, 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 this represents an opportunity to fight the Shia-dominated government in Baghdad that, has, that they believe has been oppressing them. So when these guys sweep in, it's a breath of fresh air. It says, hey, we can join these guys and achieve our own aims as well. You've got some Sunni groups that are opposing them, but for the most part, uh, you're seeing demonstrations in Mosul in support of these guys. 
So it's, it's, a, it's a bigger threat than we see, and the timelines are critical here. The president can't wait a few days. If he's going to do something, he needs to start giving those orders today. Uh, if we're going to use air power, well, he needs to start moving airplanes today. Well, let, let, let me go back one more for you, Rick, and then get to you, Rich. Uh, Rick Francona, um, why, why is it that we're led to believe that, again, like with so many other things, he just found out about this when we found out by watching on TV like the rest of us? In other words, don't we have intelligence? Didn't we know this was happening? In fact, hasn't it been reported that we turned down requests to, to use airstrikes in the beginning before they launched this, uh, this, new, this attack on these cities? Um, and, and, and why should it take more days of meeting with his military experts? Shouldn't this have already been done? Absolutely. And, and, but you're asking me a question that I, 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 have no, I cannot fathom why he has not done this sooner. Uh, this should have come as no surprise. We saw these guys gaining strength. We watched them in northern Syria. They took over uh, Raqqa province. They've turned it into an Islamic caliphate, and they've been slowly moving down the Euphrates River. They're in northern Iraq. They've taken Mosul. Uh, he's had to have known this. The intelligence community is well aware of this. Anybody that can watch uh, uh, YouTube is, is well aware of well, uh, uh, what's going on there. Uh, but he, I think we should have had assets in place now. Maybe we do. But uh, this, this uh, we're going to wait a few days before we make a decision. This is unconscionable. We need to come out strong, say what we're going to do, and then start doing it. Yeah, okay, uh, Rich? Well, first of all, the court delay is the court defeat. And that uh, may well be what the president wants, is that he would prefer this turns into Saigon 1975, complete with the helicopter off, lifting off of the roof, because then he can wash his hands of Iraq. I think the president is still caught in a cocoon from 2007 where he imagines that the Iraq war is a problem for another president and the country will blame uh, President Bush, who's long since left office more than five years ago, for whatever happens in Iraq today. In fact, he's the president, Obama's the president of the United States, and he will be held responsible uh, for, for the mess uh, that happens there. The other thing is that there were intelligence reports in January and February, open source reports, I and mean, these are publicly available. You can find them on the web, uh, the DOD websites and so on warning in, in February about ISIL or ISIS, depending on which acronym you prefer, uh, could threaten Iraqi cities, and it's getting stronger in Anbar, and that Mosul is on their list of potential attacks. So this is February, uh, there's reports. Uh, we're now uh, in June. So the president had ample warning. All right, Rich and Rick, uh, stay where you are. We're coming back uh, with uh, part two of the panel. And if you want to weigh in, folks, on social media, here's how.